Oh my god, hey! It is a troubling and stressful and anxiety-inducing time globally at the moment because of the COVID-19 coronavirus, which has now been classed as a global pandemic. The virus itself has affected people in many different countries and has had an impact in a number of different sectors, from health to travel to education. Many different people and many different communities have been affected by this virus. Amidst all of this, the theatre industry, both in the UK and worldwide, has been plunged into a certain amount of uncertainty and confusion, uh, with different theatres, different countries, and even different producers having different approaches to how best to resolve the situation arising as a result of the coronavirus, and the medical advice against large gatherings of people. Because this news differs from place to place, I'm going to attempt to answer some of the questions that people have, from potential audiences to people in the sector, and hopefully resolve some of the uncertainty and the confusion that has resulted because of the coronavirus. The main question I'm seeing asked on the internet is, is the show I've booked tickets for going to be cancelled? And this varies from place to place. The biggest news from the coronavirus thus far is that Broadway has gone completely dark. Governor Andrew Cuomo has enforced the regulation that there are to be no mass gatherings in New York of more than 500 people, forcing all of the Broadway theatres to go dark until April 12th. The deadline of April 12th is currently when shows are anticipated to reopen on Broadway. Given the uncertainty of the virus and how it changes from day to day, we can't know whether that will actually happen or not. This has had a particular impact on the shows that were due to open during this time. It was Six's opening night on the day that Broadway was forced to close. Mrs. Doubtfire was due to be opening. Caroline or Change was due to be opening the next day on Broadway. Because of the April 12th deadline, it currently means that should shows have an opportunity to reopen, that means they will still be considered eligible for the Tony Awards happening in June. Additionally, the Inheritance, which was due to close not long after the Broadway closures were announced, will not be playing any further performances and has now been forced to close even earlier than anticipated. The same approach of closing theatres has also been taken in mainland Europe. In Greece, the new production of Angela and Webber's Phantom of the Opera has been forced to close early uh, as part of a regulation that there are to be no mass gatherings of more than a thousand people. The numbers which are considered acceptable for mass gatherings have differed between different locations and different governments. Interestingly, in the West End, if a thousand people is the maximum cutoff point, there are some West End theatres up to the size of the Gielgud Theatre that would be allowed to remain open, including the Garrick Theatre and the Arts Theatre. As of today, Saturday the 14th of March, London's theatres have not closed and they remain open. But this morning there was news that next week the government may be bringing in new regulations to control the amount of people at mass gatherings, which would potentially restrict the number of theatres in London which are able to stay open. Some people have criticised London producers for not closing the theatres already, However, it is possible that there are insurance payout details which would be further complicated by them making the decision to close rather than being forced to close by government regulations. And this might be what is currently making the decision difficult. And I don't think anyone should be criticising London's producers for having to consider the financial impact of this situation because the impact of closing on the London theatre industry is going to be huge. Broadway is set to lose billions because of just a few weeks' closure, so the West End has to really consider how carefully it can make this decision. Another question I've seen, will the show be delayed? Some shows have been delayed. The opening of Andrew Lloyd Webber's new musical Cinderella has been pushed back from August until October in light of the global circumstances. Additionally, there is a new revival of the play Vanya and Sonia and Masha and Spike that was due to be opening this month at the Charing Cross Theatre and that has been pushed back indefinitely due to coronavirus. I think it's very difficult for any new show opening in the wake of this situation to drum up interest and try and build up audiences when some people are rightfully so very reluctant to leave their homes and travel to go to the theatre. Another question I've seen, what happens if actors and performers in the show get coronavirus and have to self-isolate. It's possible that we're already seeing the results of this. Today, both performances of Nora, A Doll's House at the Young Vic have had to be cancelled due to the voluntary self-isolation of one of the actors in the cast as a preventative measure. The musical Anne Julia at the Shaftesbury Theatre is going to be running concert versions of the show. It hasn't been confirmed that this is due to coronavirus. It has just been stated that this is because of cast illness. It's dubious that they haven't acknowledged 
the circumstances surrounding this. I feel like for any other show, if it wasn't coronavirus, the first thing your producers would say is, don't worry, it's not coronavirus, it's just dance injuries, it's just whatever it may be. Um, but this has not been confirmed, which is causing a certain amount of wild speculation. Speaking of performers, uh, Sarah Bareilles and Gavin Creel have made the decision to end their performances in the UK production of Waitress today on the Saturday the 14th of March in order to return to the US. The travel ban on people entering the US from European countries by US President Donald Trump has made the decision to stay in London difficult for these performers and they understandably want to return home before it might be made impossible. Another question I've seen, will this have an effect on ticket sales? From what I've seen, the answer is yes. I've been at the theatre four nights this week since the hysteria has begun and since the panic has started and since the news of coronavirus has become more widespread and there are still people at the theatre. People are still going. Much of London is business as usual. They are carrying on with their lives. However, there are a great many people who are selling their tickets who do not want to make the journey and who are concerned that the shows will even be going ahead because we don't know what is going to happen beyond even today. We have seen some reactions in ticket prices because of the coronavirus. The play Indecent at the Menier Chocolate Factory has lowered all of their remaining tickets between now and the end of March to £20 each. Equally, before Broadway was forced to close, producer Scott Rudin, who has six Broadway shows opened, reduced all of his remaining tickets to $50, um, which he said was in reaction to the global circumstances and gave people an opportunity to see the show that they would not normally have. However, that has come under fire for potentially capitalising on a negative situation as well as putting people's health at risk. As of right now, the medical advice has been social distancing. So no one can wholeheartedly say that going to the theatre isn't going to potentially put you at risk of contracting an infection. The proximity that you will have to other audience members in a confined space speaks for itself. In light of what we have been told about this virus and what we understand about this virus, people have to continue making these decisions for themselves. I'm not going to advise that you should be going to the theatre, I'm not going to tell you that you should be staying away from the theatre. People have to decide when to carry on and live their lives and when they want to take precautionary measures. It will all depend on you and your personal circumstances. Already we are seeing the cancellation of a lot of large London events. The London Marathon has been moved back to October and there's a lot of uncertainty about whether events like the Edinburgh Fringe will be able to go ahead, which is a gathering of tens of thousands of people in a very small area in Edinburgh, as anyone who has been will know. My best guess is that at some point, West End theatres will be required to close, at least over a certain capacity. Other producers may well make the decisions to close their venues in accordance with this. Before this happens, it is very likely that cheaper tickets will be made available for people who still want to go to the theatre. Uh, there will also be the option to buy tickets from other people who will be selling them on because they are now reluctant to attend. For everyone who has made the decision to still go to the theatre, please be safe, please be considerate to those around you, and please take care on your way to and from the venue. For everyone who has decided not to be attending the theatre in this time, or for anyone who might be self-isolating, or for anyone who has the coronavirus and is in the process of recovery while you are self-isolating, um, enjoy all of the staginess that the internet and that streaming media has to offer, and I wish you a very speedy recovery. As and when more information emerges about this, I may make another video letting you know what is happening. Otherwise, I hope that this has answered your questions. If you have any more questions about what you should do in response to this, about what is happening, about why this is happening, uh, please let me know, and I will do my best to answer them for you. In these very challenging and uncertain times, Please cherish the things that you love, whether that is the theatre, whether that is music, whether that is the people who are around you, and hold everything tight to yourself, and please take care.